Hi, welcome to Review. I'm Nadia. And I'm Phil. And today we are going to be um, reviewing the latest Harry Potter film, Harry Potter 6, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Which was an interesting movie, was sort of. I think, I think interesting. Interesting is a bit generous. Yeah, it was really <laughs> interesting. I, it, it was awkward. I describe it overall as awkward. Didn't you notice that? Like the actors, you were so aware that they were acting. It's so true, but I think that the main thing about the awkwardness is, is because this film has taken so much out of Twilight because it's like because it's because it's getting aimed at the age, the same age that the kids in the story are meant to be. So they're at, they're at, what is it? They're at lower six now, aren't they? So they're all kind of discovering all these things, and so I think I think like the awkwardness. If you, I mean, I don't know if you've seen Twilight, but for anyone who has seen Twilight, it's it's oh, very clear Twilight. on that. Twilight made this awkwardness. Film look like you know oscar worthy i really can't stand twilight i really can't stand it it's good for the hilarity but nothing much else really I hasn't got any other merits i mean twilight is an absolutely horrible film but you can't you can't like deny that it's got it's got like a massive like cult following and not only of 12 year olds yeah but not only did this film like take a lot of the kind of physical and like conversational awkwardness out of twilight also like a lot of the shooting do you think, like, in the first... Oh, no, 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 I didn't think so. I think the cinematography was well better and, like, you know, like, kind of darky colours and the shadowy. It was better than Twilight. Twilight was filmed, like, by a 12-year-old, probably. It looked ridiculous Oh, yeah, I mean, Twilight, Twilight was not a good Like, film. it was done like, on... It, it, it could have the like, same like, kind of grey thing going on. Everything's kind of... Especially, yeah. especially in the um, memory scenes. Oh, that's true. Okay, right, we have to do a Twilight ban now and, and just talk about Harry Potter. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, sorry, yeah. If you like Twilight... So for, for we, we can mention there. Cedric Diggory, though, because his death was sad and it may be bad if we want to talk about Cedric Diggory. I don't know if you'll ever oh, yeah, come into conversation. Yeah, I forgot, because that, that, um, what's it called? What's the name of the actor? Yes, yes, it's that guy from that film we're not allowed to oh, mention. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. Cedric Diggory, uh, yeah. Rhymes with Schmeilite. He died <laughs> tragically. <laughs> Shemile. Shemile, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, um, if you haven't read the book, so you haven't seen any of the films, um, this film comes after um, a lot of stuff happened. Um, Voldemort, the big like dark wizard, is finally starting to kind of make a move on, on world domination. Um, Ralph Fiennes, but he wasn't in this film, was he? No, he didn't even appear. Not even in like a. That's I guess he, he wasn't in the book, Voldemort, was he? But not actually Ralph Fiennes. Yeah, that's a bit shit. Ralph Fiennes is like badass. He's yeah. good. Oh, but yeah. Um, so in this film, this film in the book, nothing really much happens, in my opinion, anyway. Except for snogging. It's basically where the uh, people snog or run, and that girl snog. Just to kind of like fill the time, because the whole film, the whole book, is based around um, Harry Potter looking into memories that other people have collected to try and find out how to get rid of Voldemort. And the film. It's not. It's not entirely the same plot, but it's based around the same. But because it's not an entirely, you know, it's not a really engaging plot altogether. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it, do, it doesn't feel like the, the film really left that much out of the book to me. Because to be honest, the book was boring. Yeah, if anyway. it had have done, I think this, done this film did do an extremely good job of making making a lot out of very little. Yes, definitely. It, like I thought overall, it was entertaining. It, it did, like you say, it did a, a, as much as it could out of the book. And some of it was quite funny, sort of. Yeah, no, no, there were some really funny way. moments. Like, um, yeah, I think there was, there was a lot of like awkward comedy, a lot of physical comedy. And the music, I don't think the music's very good. The music was good, except for the end. The end, it sounded like like the soundtrack from Atonement. Like they'd just stolen <laughs> it, and it's like, Atonement's a bit different to Harry Potter, so yeah. it seems a bit weird. I was thinking, I like I liked the, the music when, uh, when all the comedy was going off. <laughs> like, funny little... Like twinkling, like ooh mischief music, like kind of twinkling ooh mischief is going to happen kind of music and hijinks. The acting standard is good in this film. Who, who would you say is was um, if you were going to give a sort of Oscar type award? Who, who would you say would get it for this film? This is tough because Jim Broadbent, although personally I think a slow on, they kind of cast that one wrong. He was very good. I thought Jim Broadbent was fantastic. Yeah, I agree. Like, but I think that if all he, all he had to do for me to make it better was to grow a big bushy moustache. Exactly, he was missing the moustache. That's all he had to do. But I love the eye thing, like you kept kind of squint on one eye. <laughs> I didn't notice that. 
I, I would get I'd give my, my acting award to Draco. Really? To Draco <laughs> Malfoy. Oh turn off in the bathroom. Because I thought he was quite good in this. I know what you did. And Draco was like, I killed a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was a good actor though, because you could see his anguish of like when he was like, I don't want to do this, and all oh, the birds died and all that. It was it was quite dramatic. And, and also, also, I loved him because he stamped Harry on the face. That was the best bit. You know when Harry's invisible and he's like, huh, don't spot on me, Potter, and then stamps on his face. He could have done another go. This is what confused me because he's prepared to kick the shit out of Harry Potter, but when he kills a bird. He cries. <laughs> That's because Harry Potter is like his life is worthless compared to a little innocent bird. I feel sorry for Draco because I think this is another one of those teenage themes they're playing on, the teenage rebellion. And at the end he's like, You don't know anything about me, Dumbledore. He's like he's got a middle child syndrome. <laughs> you don't know me, you don't know my life, you don't know what I have to go through. <laughs> oh god. And he, and he even and he even did the thing like, You don't know what I've done? I've got a tattoo. You know <laughs> yeah, anything that's about so true. that? There was so much like this putting the through in so many like teenage themes. Oh, that was another thing. You know where they're all having their potions and getting all funny on the potions. Like Harry with the Felix Felicis. That's Felix it. Felicis. And Ron with the love thing. They, both of them were drunk. Basically. Oh, I, I thought that Ron was really good with the love potion. He actually looked really like ah, oh, and all dreamy and like actually. It's a bit overdone. Yeah, but that's that's like the the potion was supposed to be really potent, wasn't it? Like really strong. That's true. So that was but good. I think they were both kind of just euphemisms for like um, underage drinking. Yeah, definitely. Like that yeah. brings us on to what was your favourite line? And my favourite line was when Ron says to Harry when he's like being in the room of requirement afterwards. He goes, "So did you and Jenny do it then?" And Harry sort of goes <gasps> like that for a minute, like kind of oh shit. But like I loved that minute because it was like kind of innuendo and children would really get it. Maybe it was stupid. So that was my favourite line of the film. I think the most classic line in this film is going to be, Fight back, you coward! Fight back! But I love, I love Draco at the end, where he's all with Dumbledore, but like, I've done things that would shock you, like, killing birds. I know you killed that bird, Malfoy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aww. Draco. Yeah, I like, I like the fight back, you coward. Oh, I like the bit where, like, Snape is like, I'm the half-blood prince. He sort of, he doesn't seem that proud about it though, you'd think he would be more proud. Because he's quite a genius at potions in the end of the day. And he invented like a really badass spell. Although, although you know that Sector Sempra, I got him say probably, you know what I mean, that one. Like I imagine Draco 2 more cut up, it was like a thin line. I thought it would be like more like and blood everywhere. thought it was going to go straight across his neck? No, I thought it would be like straight down his body, but like more like you could actually see his guts and stuff. But it wasn't that deep. I expect it to be more gross. I guess not. But I guess it is a kid's film, end of the day. That's true. Although the Dumbledore crying and saying, end it, no more. That was like, I think that end bit, the cave bit, was like really well done. Just how I imagined it.